Good morning. My name is Carolyn B. Flotus, and I'm an author illustrator, and I'm really excited about meeting with you today. I wish I could be there in person, but right now things are kind of crazy, and most of us are staying here at home. So uh, we thought it might be a good idea if we could have you visit me in my amazing watercolor fish studio. So we'll start off by talking about authors and illustrators. So what is an author? Okay, an author is the person who writes the words in a book. Uh, I'm an author and an illustrator. An illustrator is a person who does the pictures in a book. So, for instance, in this book, where I am both the author and the illustrator, I wrote the words, but I also painted the pictures. Okay, sometimes an illustrator only does the pictures and someone else writes the book. For instance, in this book, which I really love, a surprise for Teresita, Virginia Sanchez Coral wrote the words. She lives in New York and I live in Texas and I did the pictures and it was great fun because this was such a great book. And I'll talk about this in just a little bit too. Sometimes I write the words and someone else does the pictures. For example, in this book, Thank You, Poems of Gratitude, I wrote a poem and a lot of other people wrote poems. We put them together and this wonderful lady, Marlena Miles, did all the pictures and she did a wonderful job. So, I think you might have some questions about books and so I'm gonna answer some of them now. Um, when I go to schools, the first question I'm always asked is, how long does it take to make a book? So I will tell you, it takes about two and a half years to make a picture book. Now, in a picture book, first the author comes up with the words and the idea, and that takes about six months. They send it in to the publisher, and they make some more changes, and they send it to the illustrator. Now, it takes about a year and a half to not only do the pictures, but to also do the painting. And so, after that, it takes a little while to actually make the book and send it out to all the libraries. Now, you may think the only two people that work on a book are the author and the illustrator, but that's not true. It takes a lot of people. For instance, the author wrote the words for this book. Actually, this book was a traditional song, so um, we took that and made some changes. Then I came in and took about a year on the pictures, but the company that makes the book has to make changes to make it even better. And we have editors, and we have people that actually make the book in big factories and then send it out to everybody. And then it gets to the most important people of all, the librarians, the librarians who put the books in your library so that you can get them. And I love librarians a lot. I think we all do. So I know you probably really love books and want to see a little bit more about making them. So I thought that today we could actually do some stuff here in the studio. I have my Play-Doh and I have my watercolors and I'm gonna get some paper in just a little bit and I'm gonna show you a little bit more about what I do all day. So you're probably thinking why all she does all day is play. And I'll let you in on a little secret. You're right, that's all I do. <laughs> and it's great fun. I love my job. Even more than making books, I love reading books. And we have tons of books here in my house but you also have tons of books in your library. So now you can also get books online and you can listen to books for free uh, online so that you can always have the experience of having books with you. Uh, let me talk a little bit about how I grew up. I brought this globe in today to show you what the world looks like. <laughs> I think you already know what the world looks like, but on our amazing earth. I am here in San Antonio, Texas right now. Okay, and it's thundering and raining outside, so if you hear some big noises, don't be scared. It's just uh, a little rain. But San Antonio, Texas is right here, and I uh, was born actually a little bit over here in the United States, South Carolina, and that's where I got my name, Carolyn. Okay, so when we were, uh, when I was five, I moved here. And then 
I moved all the way around the world to a place called Thailand, which is almost exactly on the other side, right here. And I grew up learning another language. Uh, it was called Thai. And I wrote and uh, spoke in Thai and in English, which was my native language. And then I moved to a country called Japan. And I learned Japanese and also how to write in Japanese. Now, I also read books in Spanish and some other languages. And I love learning new languages and new words. I hope you do too. So we're going to explore all of that in just a little bit. But first, I'd like to start off by reading you my favorite book, a book that it actually took me 10 years to do, The Amazing Watercolor Fish. Okay, so I'll be right back and we'll get started. Okay, we're ready to read The Amazing Watercolor Fish, one of my favorite, favorite books. So here we go. The Amazing Watercolor Fish, written and illustrated by Carolyn D. Flores. That's me with Spanish translation by the amazing Carmen Tafoya. Okay, when you open a book, you have in papers, and that's what we have here. Then we have the title page, and every book has to have a title page. Okay, it tells you the name of the book, who wrote it, and some other information. This page is called the publisher's info, and this page is called the dedication page, and here, I wrote a dedication for my mother, Lupi Ruiz Flores, who instilled in me a love of books, and she really did. My mother writes books too. Okay, so let's get started. I wish I could see over there, behind the wall, behind the chair. I wish I knew what life held there, if it is great, if it is bare. Maybe there's a giant tree, a woolly goat, a purple sea, or maybe someone just like me behind the wall that I can't see. And so I lean up very close and listen with my ears the most, and suddenly to my surprise, I think I hear some fish-like cries. I hear, Hello, is someone there? Or is the world out there just bare? You see, I'm swimming all alone, but I think someone else is home. Are you a bird? Are you a bee? Are you a fish with fins like me? Please tell me what your world is like. And by the way, my name is Mike. And as I listen to Mike's plea, a great idea just comes to me. I'll show Mike what I cannot see. I'll show Mike what I think could be. I'll paint a picture of the world with lots of trees and rainbows swirled, of planets, castles, fantasy, because after all, Mike's just like me. And every day, Mike asks for more, and so I let my paintbrush soar. There are birds that swim, and ships with wings, and books that do all sorts of things. And every day, Mike shows me too. His stars, his hills, his oceans blue. And every day, Mike shows me more than just the water and the door. 
Click. Because when the day is finally through, I know much more than what I knew. It's everything that I could wish. The world is more than just two fish. The end. Thank you. And I love this book. I had great fun making it. I spent many hours in this very room drawing the fish. So let me show you something. This was the very first time, the very first picture of Mikey. I remember drawing this and I had drawn fish many, many times before, but I absolutely loved Mikey and he just came to life. So this is the original picture that I used as my prototype for the book. That means the very first one. This was my very first picture or pictures of Ashley. I drew her and I really loved it. Can you see how much expression she has? And isn't she sweet? So I keep these in here always to remind me of how much fun they are and how happy they make me. Just like your pictures will make you happy too. And I'm sure I already do. I am going to show you some things with my watercolors and with my paintbrush, just like Ashley, and with my Play-Doh, which I love. So I'm going to be right back Right now, I'm going to change into some less dressy clothes so that I can have a t-shirt or something that I can get dirty because I don't want to get paint on my good clothes. And um, maybe you should do that too so that you don't uh, get paint on any of your really good stuff. And uh, I'll put something on so that we can play and maybe get our hands dirty with Play-Doh and paint. And uh, I can show you some stuff that I do here in the studio to make books, which I love. Okay, I'll see you in just a little bit. Great, welcome back. Okay, now I've changed into a t-shirt so that I can get kind of dirty. And I have a really big t-shirt uh, because I like to work like that. And the very first thing I'm gonna show you is how to make a fish out of Play-Doh. So uh, as you can see here, if we turn this way, we've got uh, a little goldfish bowl and I have some of the watercolor fish I've made before. And here's a, a watercolor, like probably you will be using, and uh, a little brush. And I use this as a model when I'm actually drawing my fish for my book. But right now, I think I'd like to show you how I make a fish. So I'm gonna open up this really cool Play-Doh. And uh, let's see, ah, this feels great. It's a perfect piece of Play-Doh. All right, so I'm gonna come a little closer and I'm gonna show you how I make an amazing watercolor fish. So this is gonna be fun. I'm gonna take this little piece of Play-Doh and I'm going to roll it between my hands and palms like this. And now I've got a perfect little ball like that. That's fun, right? Okay, so now I'm going to take a popsicle stick and I'm going to make it into kind of like a lollipop. There we go. All right, and so we have this. All right, now so this is gonna be the body of our fish. And I'm thinking a fish kind of has kind of a snout. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pull it like this to make kind of a duck face. So now we have that. All right, now let me think about the back. The back is the flowy fin tail, right? So I'm gonna turn it like this and I'm gonna make my hand into a claw and I'm gonna pull this and twist it. And as I twist it, I'm gonna flatten it between my thumb and forefinger. And now I have something like that, okay? Now that tail is a little big, so I'm gonna go ahead and tear it in half. So now I have a little tail. You see that? And that's making a really cute fish. I'm gonna save this little piece of Play-Doh and I'm gonna put it here on my desk, my drawing table, 
And now we're going to do something that seems almost like magic. Okay? So everybody count with me. One, two, three, and there you go. I made a fin. Isn't she cute? Okay. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a fin the same way, but on the bottom. And now we have pretty much the body of a fish. But what I really need is for this fish to talk to me and have some expression because I'm going to be drawing it, right? And so I'm going to take a pencil. So here I come. And I'm going to do, what do you think I'm going to do? You're probably right. It's the eyes. So I'm going to put an eye right there. And let's see. So let my fish see a little bit. And now I have two eyes. Now this is the really cool part. I'm going to take the fish and I need the fish to have an expression. Okay, so I'm going to make the mouth with the point of the pencil. You can see me doing that right there. And now there's a mouth. And now we have almost a completed fish, but there's just one more thing. I'm going to take that little piece of Play-Doh that I had left over and I'm going to roll it on my drawing table to make it like a spaghetti. See how it's like a piece of spaghetti? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But don't eat it. Instead, we're going to make the lips and we're going to put them around that mouth that we created earlier. Just like this. And now I'm going to come in and talk to you. There's my amazing watercolor fish. See? You can see. Okay, so now I'm going to stand it up like that, and that is how I draw a fish. Now, I'm going to put this fish into the bowl with the other fish, and there we go. And that is what I usually have on my table when I'm drawing. Okay, so now that we've made a fish, let me just go ahead and take her out because I'd like to draw her over here. I'm going to uh, use some of my pencils and use some of my other stuff to actually draw. Okay? So, um, let's see. I have her right there. And I'm thinking uh, I would like to draw a picture of my fish. Okay? And so, here I have a piece of paper. I have a pencil. And I sharpened it. There we go. And so, let's start off with an eye. So here's her eye and I can see that she has a round mouth like this. She's got a round round lip like this. She's kind of looking a little surprised which I really like. We do this and I can see that she has a fin that looks like that. Okay? Here is her here is her body. It's kind of like looks a little like this and I love the fact that she's talking to me, okay? So I think maybe we should make her eye a little bit bigger, like that. Okay, so let's see. Right now, I'm going to make her a really beautiful tail, like this. Okay, and we're going to add a little bit there. We'll add a little bit here. And now I have my basic fish. I think if I'm telling a story, let's give her an eyebrow going like that. Hmm, what's going on? and maybe a little bit more of a fin and put her in some water so we're going to do that okay and maybe she's looking at something that's very neat like maybe she sees a book okay and she's kind of like over over it right and it's kind of floating up in the water with all of its pages like this and maybe there's a little Thing here okay so there's pages 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 and maybe it has a little bit of a back to it like that okay so now we have a little bit of a picture I think I'm gonna put a star up here just because I like stars right and uh, I think here we have something that's really kind of cool okay so uh, maybe some water Kind of like this. That's not really how I would do water, but I kind of like it. And maybe some sand here. And uh, maybe, I don't know, a plant or something like this. 
Let's give her a cactus. I know there's no cactus where she lives, but maybe there would be. Okay, and we kind of have this. And so now we have a little bit of a picture. Okay, so you can't really see me. I'm here. Let's see if I can kind of look in kind of like that. Okay, so I'm here, but we decided to change it up a little bit so you could see a little bit more of what I was doing. Okay, um, so um, let's see. I'm kind of, I don't know if I'm completely thrilled with that because that seems kind of like really rough. So I kind of make it a little bit more circle-y, right? And uh, maybe has, she has a fin here. And let's give that a little bit of, a little bit of, <laughs> give some sort of specialty right there. I, I like, uh, and that's what you can, can kind of play with, you know, with your eraser. I love this idea. Okay. And I like a lot of little stars back here. So I'm going to, I'm kind of drawing them really hard just so that you can see them. Uh, I don't necessarily make stars the way I did when I was little, which I would do that kind of, uh, this kind of thing, like right there, right? But um, I like a lot of little things in the background because I like to paint around them. And I think that that looks really neat, especially if things overlap. Okay, so basically what I'm going to do here, this looks kind of goofy. Let's kind of do something with that. Maybe have a, I don't know, another little fish with an eye, kind of looking around, smiling. There we go. <laughs> Maybe kind of back like that, right? Like um, behind it. So we have something like that. But it's just the idea of having fun, right? And you know what? I want her to be a little bit happier. So let's just do this, right? Okay, and that's how we will make her, you know? Maybe some lines there. Okay, so this is just basically just a kind of like a cute little picture. I might even add a frog or something, some sand here later. I kind of like the idea of making ground kind of more like that. And uh, I'm going to erase a little bit of this okay just so um as you can see i'm already getting uh graphite on my hands so i'm gonna lean in here and i hope i don't just interrupt things too much and pour some water in my little bowl okay like that and so now i'm just going to keep my my water right here okay now um i'm going to erase a little bit more because i don't want the pencil too much in the in the picture you know I'm kind of drawing hard here so that you can see it but um, but generally you don't you know you kind of want to make it kind of light so that it doesn't mix with the water okay so now uh, I am going to use these colors that I have right here and I like a really cool brush and I think I'm going to take this one this is going to be a jar for my brush when I'm not using it and I'm going to dip my brush in some water. And I think I'm going to kind of make some different colors here for her. I kind of like this kind of uh, really light kind of yellowish color. And I think I'm going to kind of have that here as a highlight, right? And kind of just drag that in like this. Okay. And then maybe kind of, I don't know, kind of outline her body a little bit with that. Here we have this and this. Um, I'm going to add a little bit of, I don't know, orangey, I think maybe some orange. So we'll put some orange here. And you can kind of like, see, kind of mix it. I like to use a lot of water, probably more with that, so that it kind of blends in that way, right? And we do something like this. And see, um, don't be afraid to add water because that's what makes your colors kind of blend into each other. And that's the amazing thing about watercolor, okay? Now, generally, when I do a picture like this, I like to, and if you, you can kind of notice, I'm not really big on staying within the lines. So let's see if I get a little bit of bright rose here and maybe give it some touch like that, okay. And uh, let's see, we gotta maybe make it lighter. 
it's lighter with the uh, when you use less less uh, more water and less paint right okay so we have her there and what I think I'm gonna do is I like to always paint a background a little bit and I'm gonna give it you know I think people think of water as as blue but I'm gonna kind of mix it up a little bit and so see here I'm gonna go ahead and kind of paint around those stars and I love just adding water 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 see how it just looks so cool okay and I'm gonna paint around it and I'm not gonna be afraid to bring in some other some other colors okay so here we go like that you see how we're just bringing that in and uh, let's see let's have her kind of sitting in this water like this and see how it's turning kind of purpley is that what I use I use this kind of bluish right here and and I hope you're drawing too and painting too and if you're like me I know people say well plan it and do all this kind of stuff and think about what you're gonna do but if you're like me, I just like to start and do stuff right away because I think it's fun. And I think the most important thing to do is to have fun. Because I'll tell you what, if you're drawing something, uh, don't worry about if other people like it. Because I'll tell you one thing I have learned over the years, and that is if you like it, if you're having fun doing it, other people will like it too. You see? kind of almost wants to do itself and I like that here we go all right so I kind of like that darkness there but I guess I just messed that up so it kind of is going to look a little bit more like that okay and you can kind of see how I'm going to actually drag this and use that color right here and I'm not really worried about staying in the lines who does that in real life, I think it's more fun to do stuff like this. A lot of water, right? As a matter of fact, the more water you add, it's the lighter. So that's how some people paint almost all with water, you know? And uh, that gives it a little bit of fun here. I'm going to do this just so it doesn't look like too much of a mistake. And let me bring in a little bit of green. Why? because it's fun okay so here we go and uh, so already you're starting to see this come alive right and I think up here I would like hmm you do you guys want a darker green or a lighter green I think we're gonna go with da 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 da, -da. Uh, I don't know since it's up the top let's see if we can do a lighter green I think that looks really good. And I don't mind going pretty fast. See? And see, kind of will fade. I like the idea of not being very careful. See? And you almost have different colors depending amount, upon the amount of water you use. Okay? So there, I think that that looks pretty good. I'd like to have this a little bit darker right up to the edge. So there we go. Okay. Okay. So this kind of gives you an idea of how we paint. Uh, I'm going to use a couple more colors just because I want to uh, to bring in some, uh, some, I don't know. I wanted to bring in some browns, but I don't want it to be too dark because so, I want to kind of make the idea of maybe some, you know, some sand here at the bottom. And you notice I don't even bother to... Uh, do too much with my my uh oops i want a little bit more water here okay with my uh cleaning of the bowl i think this looks kind of cool so here we are and later on i'll probably come in and do some stuff again i'm going to add just a lot of water not enough apparently there we go and here i have already i'm starting to to make it into a, a scene and so that is kind of how we paint okay um, I uh, think that this 
is pretty good. I'm going to come in later and do some more. And what's really neat is what I like to do is let it dry. And then I'll come in and do more color. See, I'll add more red. And we start to see this kind of thing. Well, we kind of are going a little bit overboard with that. And you know something else that's really cool about watercolor, actually, is that you can uh, you can kind of pull some of this off. Like, for instance, like right there, I'm starting to go a little bit darker than I want. So I'm going to take a paper towel and pull it up like this. And you know what's really cool? I kind of like uh, doing this because I think sometimes you can kind of paint with it in a way that's really interesting, right? Okay, so that's how I kind of do a lot of my work. And as you'll see, it's going to get, even if it's just a little bit and it dries and stuff, you start to give it some shape. Okay, so let's see. I think that this will give you a pretty good idea of what I do. I'll make these pictures and I'll paint and paint and paint and I add all sorts of things and it's really fun. And then uh, we'll put them in the book. So um, that is what we do in the studio. And that is how I painted the amazing watercolor fish. Okay, bye now.